Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Community Works. I'm Bernadette Welsh, your host. Each one of our shows highlights a local nonprofit agency in our community. Our goal is to educate you, our viewers, about the great work that's going on all around us every day by local agencies and their supporters. When people help their neighbors, everybody benefits. We have a very special show for you tonight. We are going to be talking with a local author, Mr. Mark Genovese, about a book that he's written. And he, it talks about his life and his fact that the, our gentleman has Parkinson's disease. And then we have Dr. Catherine Zukowski. She's an MD and she is, I'm gonna read this so I don't screw it up, a clinical fellow and in movement disorders at Yale Neurology Department. So welcome to the show, Mark and Dr. Katie. I can call you Dr. Katie now. Of course, yes. Good. Isn't Thank she you. nice? Yes, yes, we love it. Okay, Dr. Katie, would you start us off please by explaining to folks what is Parkinson's disease? Yeah, so Parkinson's disease is one of the most common neurologic uh, conditions and it affects over a million or so adults in the US and we estimate that every six minutes or so someone gets diagnosed with Parkinson's it's a degenerative disease that affects the brain so over many years an abnormal protein in the brain called alpha-synuclein builds up and it causes damage to brain cells causing them eventually to die off over time uh, and this dopamine, among other things, is very important for helping our body to move fluidly and quickly and in the way that we want it to. So Parkinson's disease causes a lot of what we call motor symptoms. So it can cause tremors, it can cause you to move very slowly, it can cause stiffness in the muscles, it can affect walking and balance but it also affects the body in a lot of other ways as well, what we call the non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's. So this includes problems with mood, like anxiety and depression, problems with sleep, problems with controlling these like automatic functions of our body, our gastrointestinal system, our urinary system, regulating even things like our blood pressure. Um, and over time, it uh, will affect cognition for many people as well, so affecting thinking and memory. So it's really a very broadly um, affecting disease that can influence every part of a person's life who has Parkinson's. Okay, thank you very much, it's very interesting. Um, a lot of people know bits and pieces about Parkinson's disease. They might think of Michael J. Fox, but they don't quite understand how the disease, what it really is. So appreciate your doing that for us. Okay, Mark, now tell us about your life, your time here. Well, I know you're a citizen of the town of North Haven. I know you're a, you're a, we're a Marine Corps, in the Marine Corps and a police officer. So tell us about that, would you please? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> Very fortunate to have lived in this town my entire life. I went to high school here. I graduated in 1974. In fact, this is our 50th year. We're going to have our reunion this year. Um, right from the graduation, I took the summer off and then went in the Marine Corps in September. Like I would go into college instead of the Marines. Uh, when I joined the Marines, I was immediately assigned to Camp Lejeune after boot camp. Um, from there, I decided I didn't like Camp Lejeune too much. I don't blame you. <laughs> so I became a Marine security guard. And if you read the book, you'll see the places that I've been and where I've gone. Um, I spent three years overseas, and when I got back, I became a police officer for the town of North Haven. It took a couple of years to do that, but I did it. And I spent 35 years as a police officer, started out as a cadet and went all the way through the ranks, all the way up to the rank of captain and retired in 2015. Well, so that, and that is definitely all of your life being a part of North Haven. So that's, yeah. that's swell, that's swell. Okay. So, Dr. Katie, can you explain how environmental factors can influence whether somebody can get Parkinson's disease? How does that work 
Um, does Parkinson's disease affect everybody the same way? Maybe you could shed some light on that, on that question. Yeah, absolutely. So getting at the first part of your question, environmental risk factors. Uh, we do know that there are some environmental exposures people can have that can increase the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. So this can include things like exposure to certain um, chemical pesticides and herbicides, um, exposures that can happen through contaminated um, water. So well water can become contaminated with like heavy metals or other um, chemicals. Um, even people who live in rural environments or live on farms actually have a slightly increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. You know, we don't know exactly how each of these um, exposures increases the risk directly. We suspect in many cases it's related to damage that happens at like a very microscopic level to the cells. But um, we also know that this type of exposure is not the only thing that is going to cause Parkinson's and having an exposure like this doesn't guarantee that you'll develop Parkinson's okay, disease. So is there some other genetic thing that's going there, on? There are genetic risk factors. There are some people who uh, have known genetic mutations that run in families that increase their risk. It's likely that there are other genes that we've not yet identified that also can increase a person's risk. The reality is for Parkinson's and for a lot of other conditions, that these environmental factors and these genetic factors can interact together and drive up somebody's risk. But it's different for every person. Right, different for um, And similarly, the disease is different for every person too. And it's quite possible that that's because of underlying different factors in their genes or things like that that make them experience some symptoms and not others. But as I was mentioning earlier, you know, there's many, many symptoms that Parkinson's disease can cause, and not every person with Parkinson's will have all of those symptoms. So some people with Parkinson's have a lot of tremor. Mm -hmm. Many people with Parkinson's have almost no tremor at all uh, and are much more bothered by like the slowness and stiffness and things like that. For some people, these non-motor symptoms are actually a lot more troublesome for them. Difficulty with mood, difficulty with sleep, uh, problems with things like constipation that you might not think is related to Parkinson's at all is actually a really common symptom. Uh, and a lot of people will have no trouble with their memory uh, or develop dementia, but some will. And we don't yet really have a good way of predicting who is going to fit into kind of what category of That's symptoms. So more research is being done. Yeah. Do, is Parkinson's something that you might not, well, I guess in Mark's case too, was Marine and a police officer, and uh, have the disease affect you at a certain age? I mean, is it progressive? It's like you don't, you're fine, and then you're kind of fine, and then you're not so fine? Yeah, that's a great question. On average, Parkinson's will affect most people or at least become apparent in their 50s to 60s. But there are uh, some people who have younger onset Parkinson's in their 40s, even 30s, um, or who develop it a little bit later on. And it is a gradual disease, so it will progress in all people over time, but it will progress for most people very slowly over many, many years decades of time. And so for all of that time, people will need to work with a neurologist to help kind of manage their symptoms as things move along. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, things that people really do um, know, have, need to know about. Um, you know what? I, did I ask you what a movement disorder specialist is? I think I forgot to ask you that. Dr. Katie, you could you explain <laughs> what a movement disorder specialist is. I think that's what you are. Yes, that is what I am. Uh, so a movement disorder specialist is a neurologist who has extra training in taking care of people with movement disorders. So the most common thing that we see is Parkinson's disease, uh, but we take care of many other conditions as well. 
Uh, Huntington's disease is another commonly named one that people may have heard of. We take care of all sorts of types of tremors, other problems with walking, balance and coordination problems, so it's really broad. Uh, but we have additional training after our four years of neurology training. Uh, movement disorder specialists will do a year or two of dedicated time just taking care of those patients and learning how to take care of those patients. And often during that fellowship training time, we'll be working on research related to Parkinson's and other disorders as well. Very good, okay. So you would be a very good person for somebody to contact if they had questions about their disease. Uh, oh, so we're gonna give people information about that later on. Yeah. Okay, Mark, going back to you, I have something in my hands here. This is a book and you wrote it. I'm not famous. Don't ever expect to be. Mark, why did you write this, this wonderful book, which Dr. Katie and I have both read, and so please tell us about your book. Why'd you write it? The main reason that I wrote the book was because I do have Parkinson's disease. And when I was talking to my neurologist, he suggested that I do crossword puzzles, uh, jigsaw puzzles, write a diary. He told me, read books. He said, write a book. And I said, write a book? What do you mean write a book? He said, write a book. Everybody can write a book. So I said, I chose to write a, wrote a, write a book. And that's what I chose to do. So I put my life down in book form. And I intend to write a couple more and keep going. Um, I'm hoping that it keeps my mind sharp. I'm hoping, hoping that it keeps Parkinson's disease at bay for a little while. Um, right now I'm a little nervous. Yep. Um, I'm shaking more than I have in the last six months. Well, you're on television. <laughs> <laughs> I, physically, normally I can do just about anything. I'm uh, into gardening. I'm into anything outdoors. I go hunting all the time now. I've always been an avid hunter. I'm always outdoors. Anything to do with the outdoors, I do it. Clamming, fishing, mushrooming. Um, but writing the book just, it kept my mind sharp. It kept, kept me thinking about what to do and how to do it and when to do it. It took me five years to get it written and published. And now it's out there for everyone to see. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very glad I have a signed copy of it. You know what I really enjoyed about the book, Mark, was your, your honesty and your integrity. It came across, I can't tell you, I hope everybody has a chance to read this book. I know you can get it on Amazon. But it spoke to your dignity as a Marine Corps person, when you had to deal with difficult situations, when you, when you were in the police force and had to deal with difficult people. And it just gave me a very good sense about your honesty and integrity. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're dealing with Parkinson's the same way, with, with honesty well, and integrity. Again, I don't want to be famous. <laughs> I want to be in the background. The, the cover was designed that way. If you look at the cover, you'll see that my medals and stuff are in the background of I'm not famous. Um, the job that we do as first responders and Marines is, is very important, but we're not celebrities, we're not politicians, we're not sports stars, but what we do is important. And um, veterans are important. That's why I wrote the book. I'm not just um, one veteran. Um, writing a book, all veterans should think about the same thing. Think, let me let me stop for a second. No, that's okay. I think what you're trying to say is that you want to support the veterans out there that served as you did, and let them know that there are things that they can do in their elder years that contribute to their happiness. Yes. Um, and I, I got that. I got that feeling about your caring for other people when I was reading the book and reading the stories that you told. Yes. It's, it's really quite remarkable. 
I always took care of my men first. My men were more important to me than myself. And I also noticed you have a, a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> there was that story about that, that, that senior officer who was afraid of snakes. And I, I, I won't oh, yeah. give it away. I won't give it away. <laughs> You've got to read the book. But you had a very good sense of humor about it. And I think, well, you were only, what, 18, 19 years old at I was, the time? I was 18, 19 years old at, at that time. And I thought I would play a joke on one of my senior NCOs, but he got me instead. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's good. That's part. I mean, I mean, Doctor K, you remember being eighteen years old? I'd like to forget about being eighteen years oh, yeah. old. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I, that's why I like your book so much, Mark, because yeah. of the honesty, integrity, and your sense of humor. Uh, it just came out in every yeah. single story I read, and I was. I don't you agree, Doctor K? I was oh, privileged yeah. to read it. My yeah. favorite story, and there's the chicken story. The chicken story. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. The chicken story. That was, is that the one that happened in Israel? Yes. You want to tell us about the chicken story? Well, the chicken. I wish I had pictures of me trying to catch the chicken in dress blues, but I do have. <laughs> I do have pictures of the chicken drinking beer. Do you really? really? Yes, I do. Wow! In your next book, I hope you put you you publish the picture of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the insert. Yeah, maybe, maybe, shiny maybe, pictures. Maybe, maybe we'll show it in the program a little later. Okay, yes. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great. Um, okay, that is good. So you've also indicated to us that writing the book is therapy. And Dr. Katie, what do you think about that, about people doing mental and physical activities to help them from your perspective as a medical doctor? Yeah, as a medical doctor, all people should be doing cognitive and physical exercise throughout their life. It's great for all aspects of your health. Uh, but specifically speaking to Parkinson's, uh, we know that cognitive engagement, and uh, I like how you highlighted this, Mark, that you were writing a book, which was something you'd never done before, and it was keeping your mind active and sharp because yeah. You know, doing cognitive activities that you are really good at, for example, is good, but doing something new is even better. And it's better for the brain to constantly be learning and growing by trying new things. So we really encourage people to stay cognitively active in that way, by learning new skills, by socializing and meeting new people and having new conversations and reading books to learn new things, all that kind of stuff really helps to protect the brain against things like dementia and kind of slow down that process if it's already happening. Um, on the physical side of things too, we have good evidence that shows us from studies that exercise slows down the progression of Parkinson's disease. Um, so we don't have a cure or anything medical that we can give, but we have exercise, so it's an essential part of treatment for Parkinson's. Uh, we recently did a study at Yale, actually, a small study with just a few people with Parkinson's, and they did a six-month-long exercise program, and it actually showed on imaging changes in their brain wow, from before really? and after, wow. showing more availability of that dopamine chemical that they're missing in those parts of the brain affected in Parkinson's disease. So we know that it works. We recommend it to all of our patients. Striving for a goal of 150 minutes a week of at least moderate exercise, but if you can't do that, I always tell people anything is better than, than nothing. nothing. A realistic goal is the goal that you should make so that you can achieve it and then keep going. So all different types of exercise. Uh, balance exercises, strength exercise, yoga, tai chi, dance, uh, boxing in Parkinson's disease is very popular as well. So I encourage everyone to do those things and it's, it's very important. I know, Mark, you do some of those things. You're out in the community. You're talking about gathering mushrooms and hunting and yeah. fishing and those are all activities that would bring you out into the community. And in, make you use your body. So um, would you agree with that? Yes. There's two things that I focus on right now. One is the North Haven High School Sports Hall of Fame. My wife and I are co-chair. And the other thing that I 
focus on is we do a veterans hike in Glastonbury, 22 kilometers. Wow. Um, and it's this year again, it's going to be our 12th year of doing the hike. And this is a little, a little advertisement for my hike. Okay, what day is it? Uh, June 20, excuse me, September 21st. Okay. And it starts at real dark 30 in the morning. Okay. About four o'clock in the morning we gather. This year we had 220 men uh, that took part in it. Wow. Uh, wow. And they're all veterans. And we do 22K because 22 veterans stake their life by suicide every day. Yeah. Sad fact. And we try to keep it, it's called a hike to remember, never to forget. Well, that's wonderful. And it goes back to your military, right? Get up and they blow the, the horn at 5.30 in the morning. Reveille. Reveille? Is, is that what it's called? sunrise, so. Sunrise. Super. Um, and that's September 24th? September 21st this year. 21st. Okay. We'll, we'll get that out there. We'll help you publicize that. Um, I like it. But I help veterans a lot now. Um, I was the service officer for the VF, the uh, American Legion in North Haven, and I'm um, in the Marine Corps League in the Glastonbury Detachment, Detachment 40. Very good. So you and Dr. Katie are in complete agreement. I love that when my guests agree on things. <laughs> you see, so you got to keep your mind active, you got to move your body. And again, Dr. Katie was saying, you know, that's not only just good for people with movement disorders, it's good for all of us. We just need to make that part of our lives because you don't know whether you might have some underlying conditions that might be helped by doing puzzles and by moving or dance. I love to dance, so dancing is my thing, so I think that's great. But mushrooming, that, that's a good thing. Hunting and fishing, I love it. <laughs> okay, so we talked about that. Um, all right, so right now we're going to do something a little on the technical side. We have a wonderful lady by the name of Holly Seymour, and she works for the American Parkinson's Disease Association. And she is going to come on via Zoom and talk to us about what this great organization does. So, Victor, could you please roll that um, for us? Okie doke. Thank you. Thanks for having me here today. My name is Holly Seymour, and I'm the program director of the American Parkinson's Disease Association Connecticut chapter. APDA is a nationwide grassroots network dedicated to fighting Parkinson's, and we work tirelessly to help approximately 1 million with Parkinson's in the United States live life to the fullest in the face of this chronic neurological disorder. We were founded in 1961, and APDA has raised and invested more than $252 million to provide outstanding patient services and educational resources, elevate public awareness, about the disease and support research designed to unlock the mysteries of Parkinson's and ultimately put an end to the disease. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Parkinson's is the second most common and fastest growing neurological disorder in the world. There are approximately 1 million Americans currently living with PD with about 90,000 more diagnosed each year. Nationally, the economic burden of Parkinson's is at least 52 billion and a total that is estimated to grow to approximately 80 billion in 2037. Here in Connecticut, approximately 12,000 people have Parkinson's disease. And the direct and indirect cost to care for people with Parkinson's in Connecticut is $617 million. As program director, my phone number is posted on the website. If our community needs to reach out directly with questions, need for resources, suggestions on available services in their area and more. APDA also offers and publishes 40 different publications for download and print, regular webinars to help all members of the community, those with Parkinson's, their care partners, family, friends, and healthcare professionals. For wellness programs, we offer free virtual training for fitness professionals, emergency personnel, and clinical caregivers, so they may better understand the needs of those they support with Parkinson's disease. We have a great list of local exercise classes that are beneficial to those with Parkinson's, such as boxing, Tai Chi, yoga, dancing, and more. Our website breaks it down uh, by areas of the state, so please check that out so you can find the class closest to your home. 
We also offer virtual programs to make it accessible to everyone, no matter where they live. We have over 30 support groups currently. My focus as program director is to develop more support groups in underserved areas of our state. These support groups are an excellent way to connect with fellow members and care partners to share stories, times of triumph and frustration, and remind them they are not alone. Some people may find that they will check out more than one support group before finding one they connect with, or they find a support through exercise class, book club, or other forms of support. We offer educational symposiums each year. We just hosted one earlier this month and it was a huge success in New Britain, Connecticut at Central Connecticut State University. And that was a great way to kick off April being Parkinson's Awareness Month. We connect the community with top movement disorder specialists and other healthcare and wellness professionals on topics that are of importance and interest to them. For advocacy, the American Parkinson's Disease Association is pleased to support State Bill 1, a Connecticut Senate bill that is currently working its way through the legislative system, which would establish a Parkinson's Disease Research Registry in Connecticut. Establishing a PD registry will provide more accurate rates of incidence and prevalence within the state. In addition, the registry will help identify high-risk groups, support clinical trials, and serve as a valuable data resource in the research community. APDA also funds eight research centers for advanced research in major academic and medical centers across the country. We have invested 60 million in research and look forward to seeing more progress focused on the discovery and cures for Parkinson's disease. So I would love to share some upcoming events with you. We have two optimism walks here in our state. Our Northern Walk in Farmington, Connecticut is being held on May 4th at the Farmington Polo Club. Please be sure to visit our website to register and donate and support our mission. And then we also will be hosting a walk in Westport, Connecticut on September 21st at Sherwin Island State Park. And we are also excited to share that we have our inaugural Driving Way Parkinson's Golf Tournament on June 17th at Grassy Hill Country Club in Orange, Connecticut. So there's wonderful resources and events throughout the state. We are here to support you. And please be sure to visit our website, www.apdaparkinson.org forward slash CT to see all the great Connecticut resources we have for the Parkinson's community. Thank you for having me. And we look forward to serving and connecting with you soon. All right. Thank you very much, Holly Seymour. She gave us a great overview support group classes, lots of information on the website. We're gonna have that information, by the way, at the end of the program, so I don't want anybody worrying about the fact that Holly might have spoke more quickly than they could write things down. And we're sorry one of those walks interferes with your walk, but hey, your walk is for veterans and that other walk is for the us other people that right. aren't. Right. So I don't think that's so bad. I don't think that's quite so bad. So thank you, uh, Holly Seymour, for that informative talk. Okay, so now I have a wonderful question for you. Mark, yes. you left us hanging. Are you going to write another book? Tell yes. us about it. Yes. Why? It actually um, is in the works, and I don't want to give it away, but it starts when I realize that when I'm diagnosed with Parkinson's. So I'm a captain in the police department. And I've been told that I have Parkinson's, and that's when it starts. And I'll flash back to other stuff. Okay. All right. That that I think that's very very important, Mark. If you could go ahead and forge ahead and write this other book, because it's going to give people more more of the information that they need from your personal perspective, and and I think that that's very valuable. Yeah. Very, very valuable. Thank and you. of course, it's what Dr. Katie says you're supposed to do. And all your other doctors, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Got to keep my mind, mind sharp, keep it going. Um, I have two wonderful kids. I want to live out my life seeing them grow up and get married and have grandchildren someday, I hope. Um, I love the town of North Haven. I've lived here all my life. I've worked here all my life, and I want to keep going. 
I, I, I can't wait for it to come out. I know you're going to take your time and do a good job, but you're going to keep me posted, right? You're going to keep me in the loop. Yes, I will. And me let too. me know um, when you're ready. And you can also let the new NHTV know things that you're doing that you want us to publicize. We're, we're happy to support your efforts because yes. we really appreciate what, you, what you're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. Because you know what, folks? He says he's not famous and he doesn't ever want to be, but I think that's a little bit of a misnomer because as far as I'm concerned, Mark Genovese is a local hero. He has taken the time to write about his life and to help him deal with the disease. And I think that by being on the show, Mark is going to help other people to deal with their disease but through similar measures. And thanks to Dr. Katie and Holly Seymour giving us more information. But I, you might not want to be famous, but you're my hero. So there, um, I, I just think it's wonderful. Okay, so now we come to a very important question. Dr. Katie, tell us about the research that's going on at Yale University, because so many people want to know, Bernadette, they, they tell me there's not a cure. So how can I remain hopeful? So if you could answer yeah. that question. That's a great question, and I'm glad that um, Holly was able to touch about that a little bit more broadly, that you know, on a national and international level, there are great efforts going on to try and uncover the cause and the cure for Parkinson's disease. So we take that mission very seriously at the Movement Disorder Center at Yale. It's an essential part of our work along with providing clinical care for our patients. Um, so we have many different types of research studies going on and I think what I'd really like for your viewers to take away is that if being involved in research in any capacity is something that you might be interested in, Often people think that maybe, you know, I'm not a good candidate to participate in research, but there is a study out there for you. <laughs> whatever your interest might be or whatever your needs might be, we have studies that are focused on treating Parkinson's disease. We have studies for people who have uh, depression as a part of Parkinson's disease those exercise studies that I mentioned, we have things of that nature. People who just wanna learn a little bit more about how their brain works, uh, you can get involved in a study for that. We have clinical trials that are either running or upcoming, both for uh, people who may have what we call prodromal Parkinson's disease. So this is a really important part of our research right now. We know about some of these risk factors and some of these early signs that someone might be developing the disease, and we want to find a way to get in there and treat it before it develops into Parkinson's disease. So we recently uh, got a grant to help fund a clinical trial aimed at uh, trying a treatment to try and prevent Parkinson's disease from developing. So we'll be doing that. We have treatment trials for other rare conditions like multiple system atrophy, which is another movement disorder very closely related to Parkinson's disease. There's not a lot of those out there, so I want to mention that as well. Um, but there's research out there for everybody, and so I really encourage patients, if they're interested in getting involved, it's a great way to feel empowered. It's a great way to learn more about yourself and your condition and feel like you are giving back to the community and helping to leave your contribution uh, to the world. So I know we're gonna show our slide. Anyone who's interested in getting involved in research should make sure to email us. I have at a our question, email. Dr. Katie, if somebody is, do you need a, like a control group, like people who do have Parkinson's and people that don't? And yeah. do you need different age groups? Like you say anybody could participate. Do you really mean anybody? Yeah, it depends on the study. Uh, but yes, certain studies do involve control patients, so people who do not have Parkinson's disease. Uh, and then there's other types of studies where it's all um, just people with the disease, for example, but then they fall into a control group, meaning they don't get um, the trial treatment versus the treatment. But we do have different types of studies, like I mentioned, for people who may 
uh, think that they're at risk for Parkinson's, whether that's because of a symptom they have or because it runs in their family. So those types of folks who are younger maybe and don't have any medical problems can also find ways to be involved. Okay, that is very hopeful. Well, I wish we had more time. Um, we will do this again when Mark comes out with his next book. Um, and I just can't thank you, Mark and Dr. Katie, I, so much for being a part of this wonderful show. And what I've learned from reading Mark's book and from listening to Dr. Katie and Holly Seymour is that you can never get enough information. Do your research, learn about things, and also know your own body. So if you know what you are like on a normal day or month or week, and all of a sudden you start feeling something a little bit off or not right, go to your primary care doctor. Have an exam, ask questions, you know, be in control of your life. Uh, please don't let it, just let it go. Okay, again, thank you so much for watching our program on Parkinson's disease with author Mark Genovese and Dr. Katie, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.